I'm joined here now by Dave Nellis, who is the National Chair of the Trade Union and Socialist Coalition. Dave, firstly, you're at Warwick speaking about the EU debate. Why do you want to leave? Well, I think since its inception and increasingly over the last 25 years, the EU stands for the Employers' Union. It's a construct which favours big business, um, and in its uh, treaties and its uh, directives, it's uh, eating away at public ownership, it's promoting privatisation, liberalisation, marketisation of essential services in transport, in energy, in water, postal services and, uh, and other things. And I want to see uh, a, a new Europe. I'm in favour of internationalism. I want one where working people can cooperate in a socialist way and basic public industries can be publicly owned. The EU is an obstacle to that. But do you think that if we were to leave on the 23rd of June, I mean, it was something that was spoken about briefly tonight, there would be a Europe that favours right-wing interests? I mean, obviously you come at it from a left-wing perspective. Do you think that we'd, we'd just have restrictions on immigration? I think, regretfully, politics in certain parts of Europe is moving in that direction already. Look at Austria, look at Hungary, look at the prospect of Le Pen winning the presidency in, uh, in France. For those who say staying in the EU is for all for harmony, sweetness and light, they've got to look at the way in which those uh, particular potential changes could take place to the heads of government. And it's the 28 heads of government, all of whom are pro-capitalist, pro-market. Uh, 19 of the 28 are within the uh, equivalent of the Tory party in terms of constructs within the European uh, Parliament. Some are worse than the Tory party, as I've uh, already uh, mentioned. So staying within the EU in a, uh, an organisation which is designed to strengthen the, uh, the control of capitalism over the whole of the, the continent, it's just allowing factorism to be writ on a continental scale. Scale. Do you feel honestly let down or betrayed by Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell? You were a long-term sort of friend of Corbyn and political ally. You come at the same political spectrum. And he had a really good opportunity, you would perhaps argue, to really change the discourse on this particular debate. Well, Jeremy and I were elected in 83 on a Labour Party manifesto against the EC. And we've held those views, my case uh, still today. Jeremy, even in the summer when he was campaigning to be Labour leader, was doing meetings around the country mm. where when he was asked the question about David Cameron, renegotiations. He at least had the position of let's see what Cameron comes back with and if that impacts on working people, their families and their uh, union rights and so on then Labour will still be against it. Unfortunately within uh, about 10 days of him being uh, elected in September of last year he signed this Faustian pact with Hillary uh, Benn in order to preserve Hillary Benn and some other right wingers within the shadow uh, cabinet and promised to uh, become second fiddle in, in David Cameron's orchestra when it came to the, the referendum. And I think there's a big chance being missed. I can see on the 23rd of June either a leave vote or a close remainder vote, David Cameron being toast that night, fractions uh, uh, within the Tory party uh, erupting into open uh, warfare, uh, a unified labour and trade union movement was arguing for leave and against the Tories could take advantage of that and demand not just a change of Tory leader but a general election to change the government. So in that sense I think Jeremy and John have missed a golden opportunity to take their brand of politics forward in this country. You, you describe yourself in the debate as an internationalist and socialist. Um, one of the key arguments for Remain is, you know, we can't be internationalist if we uh, leave the EU. How would you see sort of British internationalism if we were to leave the EU? Well, I made the point in the uh, debate that uh, when it comes to things like human rights, which are governed by the Council of Europe, that's a body of uh, uh, 47 countries, not the 28 of the European Union. When it comes to playing football in Europe, UEFA is 57 countries, not the 27 of the EU. When it comes to the Eurovision Song Contest, it's 52 countries, including Israel and Australia, which stretches the boundaries of uh, Europe quite a, a distance. It's not the 28 of the EU. In other words, in all sorts of different aspects of life, there are ways of organising on an international and a European scale, not through the narrow confines of the politics and the economics of the EU itself. I would want Britain leaving on the 23rd, then engaging through trade unions and socialist campaigns. Let's give a just off the cuff for an immediate uh, suggestion for a uh, European-wide £10 an hour uh, minimum wage. Because if people weren't forced to flee from low-paying uh, countries, particularly in former Eastern uh, uh, Europe, to the countries of, of Germany and, uh, and Britain because of the disparity of, uh, of wages, they could perhaps choose to live and love where their families are without having to leave their families to, to seek work. So let's have the sort of Europe that lifts wages and lifts everybody's living standards, not just makes big profits for big corporations. And that's not possible in the EU. It's unreformable in that sense. Oh, absolutely. To yeah. change a treaty, you need 
the unanimous vote of 28 heads of uh, government, as I said, the vast majority of votes, and not just Tories or pro-capitalists, some of them are even worse than that. I see no prospect of democratic change within the uh, EU, but I do see the possibility on June the 23rd, if we vote to no, we could shape a new government in this uh, country and a new form of internationalism. Just a few more questions. Um, Tusk, you're obviously the national chair. Um, and they, you know, they did field a lot of candidates in the 2015 election. Where I am in Kingston, we had a candidate called Laurel Fogarty who stood. Uh, did you realistically think that they were going to be the main uh, opposition to the EU? Because I know you applied to be the official campaign. Uh, no, we, we, we stood um, 750 candidates in the uh, 2015 election, over 600 for the councils and uh, about 130 for uh, Parliament. We were the sixth largest uh, party that you've never heard of in those elections. Uh, and that's because we got so little uh, uh, coverage. We, we, we stood uh, uh, hundreds of candidates in the council elections this year. Um, and the only debate that took place on the local BBC radio Radio CWR was for 30 minutes five days before the uh, uh, election. So, socialist anti austerity candidates, even with relatively large numbers of uh, you know, 10 to 15 percent of the national uh, total, still don't get those arguments uh, coming across. And that obviously has an impact when it comes to elections. But uh, we did get anti-austerity councils elected in places like uh, Southampton. We came close in uh, in, uh, in 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 parts of the, the north uh, west. We got loads of uh, towns and cities where we were getting two, three thousand votes. Uh, it's it's something to build on. But uh, no, at the moment we we we're, we we're, we quite clear and modest where we uh, we are. We stand in large numbers of uh, candidates, but we're averaging about three and a half, four percent of the vote. And what have you thought about the nature of the debate? I mean, obviously it's been quite egotistically driven, some would argue. I mean, you, the side you advocate has really been driven by Boris Johnson and Nigel Farage, which I imagine you're quite dismayed at. What have you thought about that? Well, well Tusk applied to the Electoral Commission to be the main Leave campaign, or if we weren't acceptable as that, that, be, that we put strong arguments for there to be no Leave campaign uh, uh, chosen. Because the differences between Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson and their uh, uh, supporters were, were, were uh, relatively uh, minor. And the agenda between what has uh, emerged as the Remain and Leave uh, campaigns on such things as austerity, on such things as public ownership, doesn't allow the sort of debate that would have happened had there been an independent working class and socialist uh, alternative. But we, we stood that because we didn't want the debate to be uh, diverted down the road that Nigel Farage and, and Boris Johnson uh, have taken it, particularly on the question of, uh, of migration and the racism that has come about because of that. And just finally, uh, do you think we should have a general election after this EU referendum? It's something you touched on briefly in the debate. Um, obviously, if, if it's a very close vote, you, are, you would argue that a general election is necessary, would you? If it's a very close vote, I think David Cameron will uh, go. There could well be some either resignations, by-elections or defections of uh, Tory MPs. They've only got a 12-seat uh, majority. Uh, I think Jeremy uh, uh, Corbyn and the Labour and Trade Union movement should be demanding, not just on the 24th of June that there is a change in the leader of the Tory party, whether it's a, a vote for leave or a close remain vote, but actually uh, recognising the fact that on a 24% uh, of, of the popular uh, turnout, this Tory government does not represent the majority of the, uh, the country, and on an issue that's uh, engaged people in the way this now has en engaged people, on the 24th of June, I think it's right we should be talking about a general election and a realignment of parliamentary representatives more in line with where people are thinking about politics now, not how they were thinking about uh, politics a couple of years ago. And would you be prepared to sort of an unofficial alliance with Jeremy Corbyn? I, I, I don't think there's any uh, prospect of me as an individual ever <laughs> being admitted to a member of the Labour Party because Jeremy doesn't run the Labour Party. Yeah. You know, he's got about a dozen mates in uh, Parliament and a couple of hundred Labour MPs are against him and the machinery up and down the country. So, for example, in Coventry, uh, the cuts that were uh, implemented by the Labour uh, Council were exactly in line with previous uh, uh, years. There was no change whatsoever just because Jeremy had been elected as, uh, as, as leader. But a working arrangement, I've, I've actually... Uh, uh, tried to put this forward, that Labour itself was founded 116 years ago as a federal uh, coming together of different social societies and the trade uh, unions, and that could be a model for the, uh, the future. It's a model that actually Tony Benn tried to put forward in the 1980s, of socialists inside and outside the Labour Party cooperating, and I'd well uh, uh, be prepared to discuss with Tusk 
cooperating with Labour. We wrote to every Labour candidate standing for election, the May election, saying if you're uh, against austerity, you want to fight the cuts, we will support you. We won't put up candidates against you. We will help in that uh, battle. However, if you're just going to bend the knee and carry out another few million cuts in, uh, in, in youth facilities, in libraries, in adult social care, then we will put anti-austerity candidates against you. That's a sort of cooperation that uh, I'm more than happy to, uh, to discuss. If there's a fight taking place on Labour, socialists outside Labour would want to support that. But if Labour's carry on the same old austerity, they're going to be opposed. Thank you very much for joining me today. My name's Dave Nullis and you're listening to Raw. I'm joined here now by Mayor of London candidate George Galloway for the Respect Party. George, thank you very much for joining me. We're Pleasure. We're currently in the interval of a very heated I'm, hustings. I'm a big fan stuff. of your station. Thank you very much, yes. So, George, on the Mayor of London race, what is your main priority for London, would you say? Well, how